Has the pandemic left you ready to hit pause on your relationship? This morning, couples therapist Mitchell Smolkin is joining us with advice on how you and your partner can combat division. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your background and how working as a couples therapist has been for you during the pandemic. It's obviously been a very testing time for relationships. So I trained as a couples therapist uh, about 10 years ago. Canada, actually, in Ottawa, is one of the biggest exporters of couples therapy around the world. Uh, so it's interesting because you get a lot of feedback from different countries. I think for couples, I mean, this was really a test in many ways. You know, it was like going into a bit of a storm. And for some couples, it worked out really well. There's more alone time. There's less of a commute. There's time to be together. And for others, they finally realized they were living with somebody. <laughs> and they're always there. And that was, I think a lot of people were very courageous and brave that came into my practice and just said, you know, I've got to learn what it's like to really be home. And uh, but it's been challenging for for many. I think, yeah, it's really brought out some real truths in different relationships and it, and how people um, kind of their truth selves are starting to be revealed. So how do you think this overall easing of restrictions during the, this pandemic will further contrast the differences between introverts and extroverts? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, there's a professor at York University that put out a video on YouTube. His name is Donald Carveth at the beginning of the pandemic. And he said, for many introverts, it was like Christmas came early. No one's asked them to go out. I can spend Friday night reading a book. No one's making plans. And it actually reduced a lot of anxiety for people who just want to stay home. And for others, they really like have been chomping at the bit to get out, re-energize, go out with friends. And I think ultimately, when it comes to to the restrictions being eased, you know, you know, again, it's just going to put couples into a situation. Maybe they have different ideas about how to do that. And even my wife and I are already negotiating. I'm the one that wants to make all these plans. And she's like, you know, why don't we do one thing, do it well. And, you know, so you have to find uh, try and find some middle ground and actually hear each other. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Do you think that, you know, these discrepancies in post-pandemic plans is going to affect couples? Well, you know, it, it's a stressor like any other. So the beginning, the stressor was, of course, you know, now we're home. Maybe people are homeschooling. And so that's certainly showing up in, in how you're different. And, and as you're pointing out, and it's a great point, now it's, a, it's, the, it's almost like the opposite. I mean, ultimately... You know, hopefully there was some trust that was built around differences or, or you discovered more and that's going to help couples deal a bit with their differences. But but certainly it's a good point. I mean, people are going to have to talk about what keep what, what helps each person feel safe and try and find some middle ground. Definitely. Now we could do, you know, an hour session probably on the best way to address these issues with your partner. But if you had to sum it up uh, with some tips for our viewers that are listening and watching this morning, what would you say? I think the secret is, and I was telling a couple of this this week, is that these things are normal. Having differences is normal. We get scared, and that, that's actually what gets in the way of having good conversations, right? Somebody wants to do something, and you feel different than them, and you're like, oh, no, are we compatible, or we're different, or, you know, our brains get very scared. Take a deep breath. It's normal. You're not incompatible. We're just different. And so that's what I would tell people is just come back and try to talk about it from a place of realizing you're not alone. That just helps us feel more grounded and safe. Okay, 30 seconds left, but I just want to make sure we mention your brand new podcast, The Dignity of Suffering. What's it all about and where can people find it? So you can find it everywhere. You can go to my website, mitchellsmolkin.com, where I have tips. It's, it's about finding space in our life to dignify these moments, like these difficult conversations, places where we feel scared, with a sense of dignity. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to interview Dr. Gabor Mate, who everyone knows across the country. And when the pandemic came out, he said, let yourself be sad. Let yourself feel these things. So you can find it, the dignity of suffering on all places that you listen to podcasts and uh yeah, thanks for having me on. Awesome. I think that's going to be a really interesting conversation. Thanks so much for your time this morning, and uh, good luck with all those couples post-pandemic. <laughs> Thank you. Have a lovely day. <laughs>